From the final paragraphs of the book Eschatology, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. The exaltation of Christ, the entry of his humanity into the life of the triune God through the resurrection, does not imply his departure from this world, but a new mode of presence to the world. In the imagistic language of the ancient creedal symbols, the mode of existence proper to the risen Lord is that of sitting at the right hand of the Father. It is sharing in God's sovereign power over history, a power which is effective even where it is concealed. Thus, the exalted Christ is not stripped of his worldly being, but by coming to transcend the world, is related to it afresh. Heaven means participation in this new mode of Christ's existence, and thus the fulfillment of what baptism began in us. That is why heaven escapes spatial determination. It lies neither inside nor outside the space of our world even though it must not be detached from the cosmos as some mere state. Heaven means much more, that power over the world which characterizes the new space of the body of Christ, the communion of saints. Heaven is not, then, above, in a spatial, but in an essential way. This enables us to pronounce upon the legitimacy, as well as the limitations, of the traditional images. They retain their truth so long as they evoke transcendence over, and freedom from, the world's constraints, and the power of love which overcomes the world. They become false, if they either remove heaven altogether from relation with this world, or if they attempt to integrate it totally into the world as some kind of upper story. Scripture, accordingly, never tolerates the monarchical supremacy of a single image. By utilizing many images, it keeps open a perspective on the indescribable, in particular, by announcing a new heaven and a new earth, the Bible makes it clear that the whole of creation is destined to become the vessel of God's glory. All of created reality is to be drawn into blessedness. The world, God's creature, is what the scholastics would call an accidental element in the final joy of the redeemed. Heaven is, in itself, eschatological reality. It is the advent of the finally and wholly other. Its own definitiveness stems from the definitiveness of God's irrevocable and indivisible love. Its openness vis-a-vis -vis the total eschaton derives from the open history of Christ's body, and therewith of all creation, which is still under construction. Heaven will only be complete when all the members of the Lord's body are gathered in. Such completion on the part of the body of Christ includes, as we have seen, the resurrection of the flesh. It is called the parousia, inasmuch as then the presence of Christ so far only inaugurated among us, will reach its fullness and encompass all those who are to be saved and the whole cosmos with them. And so heaven comes in two historical stages. The Lord's exaltation gives rise to the new unity of God with man and hence to heaven the perfecting of the Lord's body in the pleroma of the whole Christ brings heaven to its true cosmic completion. Let us say it once more before we end. The individual's salvation is whole and entire only when the salvation of the cosmos 
and all the elect has come to full fruition. For the redeemed are not simply adjacent to each other in heaven. Rather, in their being together as the one Christ, they are heaven. In that moment, the whole creation will become song. It will be a single act in which, forgetful of self, the individual will break through the limits of being into the whole, and the whole will take up its dwelling in the individual. It will be joy in which all questioning is resolved and satisfied. Live we all this worldly mirth, and follow we this joyful birth. Transeamus, 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 transeamus.